Right now, we're here talking with First District U.S. Congresswoman Ashley Hinson of the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. Thank you for coming by the booth today. Good to be with you, Dustin. It's a great, beautiful day at the State Fair. And it's great to see everybody out and about here at the State Fair and enjoying just getting back to some form of normality. Well, absolutely. I have my family with me here today because, um, you know, it, it's... It's uh, been two years since we've been here to the fair, so uh, ev absolutely been looking forward to it. Uh, sad we didn't have it last year, but really excited that everybody can get out and experience all the fair has to offer this year. And so as we're sitting here by the cattle barn, of course we're going to be talking ag issues, and you've got some uh, new information that you want to pass along to us here. So tell us about what is being called the EATS Act, if I'm not mistaken. Right, so um, basically what we're trying to do is call out California for trying to exert its influence over Iowa's pork producers and, and other states' ag producers. So what we're doing is we're exposing agricultural, um, uh, 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 we're trying to make sure that that bacon, for example, in California, which they're trying to put all sorts of uh, tariffs and, and restrictions on that it's not limited here in the in the United States. Um, I actually believe it's unconstitutional. It's a bacon ban in essence what they're trying to do in California and so um, they're trying to suppress our bacon and, and we're not having that. So that's exactly what we're doing and our piece of legislation is a companion piece to the piece that Senator Grassley and Senator Ernst introduced um, that basically says they can't interfere with our regulation of, of our pork products here in Iowa. Our pork producers know how to do it right um, and, and that's basically what our message is, is this is uh, not uh, an issue that they should be interfering and meddling with and um, I believe it's unconstitutional so um, don't California or Iowa let us do what we do best and and uh, you know people want bacon on their plates they want eggs on their plates they want pork products on their plates um, and our Iowa producers know how to do it best and, and California ranks as one of our biggest purchasers of our pork uh, they're they're ranking up with some of the top five countries that purchase pork so I mean they've been wanting the product and this is almost a logistical nightmare for producers because if they don't produce a certain way they're not gonna be allowed in there so either essentially you're marketing it two different products two different ways or you're having to do major upgrades to your facilities and and even if they're trucking the pork through the state they've got to be up to those standards right and I think what what it does ultimately is the big the big guys who can maybe handle making some of those investments can accommodate this but our small family farms they're going to be the ones who are hurt the most the small businesses who are trying to you know put breakfast on Americans plates every day those are the people who are going to be hurt the most um, and so I, I think it's just it's smart policy to say hey stop being so woke with our food policy policy. Our, our producers know how to do it right, as I said, and um, and I think that's really the bottom line here is uh, this is a bacon ban, plain and simple, um, through through that policy. And it seems like Californians think bacon comes from the grocery store. It doesn't. It comes from family farms here in Iowa. Now, your counterpart uh, in the congressional delegation, Cindy Axney, was here a couple days ago, said you guys are being called back now to start talking about uh, transfer, uh, infrastructure bills and things like that. What are your thoughts going into that debate? Yeah. Well, I, I you know, I, I'm here at the fair because I want to listen to what Iowans have to say, but I can tell you with the, the town halls that I've had around the district and the conversations I've had in all 20 counties in the first, um, people are telling me they want that targeted infrastructure investment. So roads and bridges, locks and dams, um, broadband included in that conversation. What I'm watching, and that bill is over 2,700 pages long, um, as it comes through the House, we're reviewing it right now. Um, my biggest concerns are that they're going to sneak in a bunch of Green New Deal policies that would be absolutely destructive to Iowa's uh, economy. And so um, I want to make sure Iowa biofuels uh, is properly represented and properly advocated for in that bill and in that infrastructure as well. Um, but again, I think, you know, price tags we're talking about here, three and a half trillion, one point nine trillion. I mean, we've spent trillions of dollars already this year. Um, that's my biggest concern is respecting taxpayers and standing up for rural America. All right. And of course, uh, you mentioned uh, ethanol biofuels. They're notably absent from this legislation. Obviously, you understand the idea of having goals of cleaner uh, environmental uh, you know, emissions and, and cars and things like that. But it's going to be a long way before we're all driving electric cars. So why is it that we cannot seem to get them to, to buy on the biofuels now while we have them going? Well, and I think that's a big concern for me is, you know, as we're having these discussions about being better for our climate, I think that's what we all want to do, but we have an answer to go right away here. Um, you know, when you look at the amount of subsidies that they're including for electric vehicle charging stations, um, they're trying to get rid of low emission programs and change them to only no emission programs. This is not something we flip a switch on overnight, but we do have a, a ready to go um, option here in our biofuels, biofuels being biodiesel and ethanol, um, ready to go here in Iowa. Much of that is made in the first district so obviously I'm gonna go to bat for them because I think it's really important that we um, not only support a cleaner environment but support the economy here as well and I think it's a it's a good way to do both.
And today at the fair, we're obviously celebrating Century Farms, a century and a half farms. And that's an interesting backdrop when you're talking about tax policies and stuff that might be changing the way farmers are able to hand down their operations. What are things looking like in the house? Yeah, well, that's what I'm most concerned about with a reconciliation package is because they're going to say, hey, we want to spend all this money. Now Ways and Means Committee, here, pay for it. Um, and I, the way I see it is they're going to keep coming back to the till. It'll never be enough. And that's what's unfortunate is they're going to come after family farms. They're going to come stepped up basis, capital gains tax, and then the corporate tax. My job is to stand up for taxpayers and make sure that uh, the government's spending money it, it, as judiciously as possible and that Iowans and Americans get to keep more of their money, not uh, the government taking it more. It's not government's money. It's taxpayers' money. And so that's my, my philosophy um, as we're having these discussions. we got to protect those family farms. Is there a way, though, to exclude family farms and the small businesses we see in the rural communities and in those small farms, uh, families, far businesses that are being passed along while still making sure that the billion dollar corporations out there like the Amazons are, are paying their share of it and are not getting away with it. Yeah. Well, I think that if people are obviously skirting around tax policy, that's a whole other discussion. My biggest concern is once you open the door to these increases, again, like I said, it will never be enough. So they'll come for one this time, but then in a few years they'll come back and that's my biggest concern. So, so I'm going to continue to to make sure we're making smart investments, but I think uh, making sure that they're paid for and that we're not spending money we don't have. Um, the federal government could learn a lot from how we do things here in Iowa where we actually spend within our means. All right. Any other messages you have for Iowa farmers here at the State Fair? Just that if uh, there's any issues that you're having, feel free to reach out to our office because obviously our, of uh, our office is based in customer service. That's our job is to work for you. So um, if you're facing any challenges, make sure you're reaching out. Let us know what you're thinking also about these policies as they make their way through. All right. And one last question I have to ask everybody who comes here. What is the one thing that Congresswoman Hinson needs to stop and get for a treat when she's at the fair? What's her favorite thing? Pickle dog, 100%, um, and I get it wrapped in ham, so yeah. <laughs> pickle dog wrapped in ham. We've, I'm going to start hanging out with our congressional delegation. You like the pickle dog wrapped in ham. Uh, Senator Ernst goes for the goes for the funnel cake. Uh, Congresswoman Axney said she goes for the deep fried Oreo. She doesn't care what calorie count is because she walks it off, she said. So, I mean, you guys really know how to have fun at the fair. Well, and my kids love the bacon on a stick. So, I, I mean, that's a pretty close second for me, but the pickle dog is my good old standby. All right, that's Congresswoman Ashley Hinson here on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. Thank you.